Have you ever been in an end game where there's equal material, you think you have an advantage, but you can't seem to quite convert that advantage and get frustrated? That's been like all of us. So let's explore how to ameliorate that and try to win this end game. Okay, so this was taken from a game between Alfred Brinkman with the white pieces and Akiba Rubinstein. It was played in Budapest, Hungary in 1929. And this was after Brinkman played King E2. So of course things look better for Rubinstein because his king position is much better and his pawns are more advanced, but it might be a little bit tricky how to exactly win here. So similar to a past video, uh, Black can try this fast break idea. Let's give you guys a moment to see if you can figure out this fast break idea for Rubinstein. Okay, so Rubinstein started with b4. And first, let's prove that this isn't just giving away a pawn for nothing. So if white had tried capturing, then we can first play c3, b takes c3, king c3, king d1, and then we can seal the edge. So king b2, and then we're going to promote with a check. So even though white is coming through here quite quickly, black will be just in time to promote with a check, and then they'll gobble up this pawn and then black should be winning. Okay, so let's back up. In the game, white instead continued with king d2. So in this case, Rubenstein needed to continue with b3, c3 check, king e4, king e2. So after all of that funny business, then Rubenstein still has much farther advanced pawns, but it's actually still not so easy to win need to force this king into a very awkward spot uh, so that these pawns can be traded off but only under favorable conditions. So let's see how he did that. He started with king f4, king f2, then king g4. White need to play something. Black is making progress. King g1, g4. So just making sure that white will need to play some sort of move here. Notice that king h1, this will be losing after, for example, king f2, king h2, and then, for example, black can just come over and nab this pawn since it's much further down the board. Um, I suppose other moves could also work, but anyway, we see that this move is not working for white, so that's the reason why Brinkman tried king f1. And now Akiba Rubenstein just wedged his king all the way in here. So he had to do that because otherwise there's no way that he was going to get at this b2 pawn. So king h2, king f2, and then notice that uh, just rushing things with g3, this would actually be a big mistake. For example, king f3, and then he doesn't have any more moves left, so he would have to abandon his pawn. So that would be a mistake. So therefore, he instead played this really surprising move, king h1. So after king h1, then we see that king f1 wouldn't work to g3. Right? That would be putting white in a suksvang, then they would have to give up their g2 pawn. So therefore, um, white tried king g3, king g1. Now he really forced these pawns to be traded off, but on his terms. So after captures, captures, we can see that Rubenstein is going to capture this pawn, and he's much closer to promoting than his opponent is. So you can speed through all these moves if you guys want the proof, uh, but Rubenstein did indeed to go on and win this game. So he used that concept of making sure that he's uh, making this fast break idea at least maybe happen, and then wedging his king through and only then being able to win this tricky pawn endgame. If you guys like this video, then please drop a like, and also consider subscribing if you aren't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.